Hi, I'm Doug Schaefer with Advantage Feeders USA. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about how to actually use the feeder with different kinds of feed, different kind of livestock. We're going to talk about how to get started with it. And then we're going to talk about once we get started with it, where we adjust it and go from there to take full advantage of the feeder. Um, a little bit about how this all happened was about seven, eight years ago, I ran across my first feeder at a farm show. And I was very intrigued with the concept, so I bought one to try it. I might have been the first one to buy one in the U.S., I don't know. But anyways, I was, I was very amazed because the owner of the company, Jared Rooney, was the one that sold me on the feeder. And when he mentioned to me that we could limit or control intake with the feeder without any extra ingredients in the feed, I became immediately intrigued with it. Uh, since then, it's, it's just been an amazing experience. It's been a unit that, that we can use to either limit intake or control how animals eat out of it without the expense of added limiters to the feed. Uh, it's amazing what we've cut down on our wastage of feed. We're in a contemporary self-feeding situation versus this one. We see almost zero waste of feed. Uh, the way that the animals eat out of this feeder, they have to use their tongue to access the feed. So they're actually using the saliva on their tongue to pull the feed out of here and eat it, okay? The way it works and the way you can limit or control is that that animal will spend an average of five to eight minutes at the feeder before their tongue becomes dry. They become tired, they leave the feeder to go drink, graze, eat hay, then revisit the feeder. So in essence, what we're doing is say you were feeding 1% of an animal's body weight per day in feed, in one feeding and hand feeding, we can actually set this feeder to where we feed the same amount of feed, but we feed it over the duration of the day. So we're spreading that out. And, and that's where the efficiency comes in. That's how we limit the intake. Uh, it's not been uncommon in some of our trials to see an increase of 20 to 25% increase in feed efficiency using this feeder as compared to other traditional methods of feeding. On today's feed prices, in my opinion, that's huge. So that's where we're gonna go with the feeder today. So when you're ready to get started with your feeder, there again, we're gonna, we're gonna cover how you train your animals to start, and then once they're trained, where you go from there. Before we go there, I'm gonna touch a little bit on feed ingredients. Different feeds will react differently in the feeder. We can feed a variety of feeds in these feeders. As you can see here, we've kinda of got a mix of both whole grain, crimped grain, pellets, and you can go with that mix, you can go with a whole grain, you can go with all pellets, but you will set the feeder differently for different results with different kinds of feed. So we'll touch more on that a little bit later in this video. There's gonna be a lot of information to kind of get through in a short period of time. So 101, beginning. Um, there's a difference between cattle, sheep, and goats, which are the three main species. We have people feeding other species on these feeders the three main species that we feed on them. Uh, what we found is cattle are a little more difficult to train. Sheep and goats take to it very quickly. So what we'll go through in the training phase will be good for all species. It'll just be on a different time frame depending on the animal. When we first start out with the feeder, we've got feed in the feeder. We've gone through in our previous videos, we've gone through how to adjust your upper adjuster and your lower adjuster. If you haven't seen that, I would recommend go back, maybe take a quick look at those videos and then come back to this one. So now that we've got our feet in our feeder, we're gonna start off, let's say we're starting off and we're gonna start some background or weight cattle that are weaned, that's never had exposure to a self feeder. We first want to get them to eating out of the feeder. It's gonna be a little different than a traditional feeder where the feed's in the trough, you can see here that we simply let the feed down into this little area where they're eating. So in the beginning, you may want to start without your guard, okay? This is the guard that segments it as, as we presented in earlier videos. With cattle, it's probably not uncommon to maybe leave this guard off for two, three, four days, five days. 
in an extreme case where we're trying to start cattle very quickly, we may want to go to a feed that's a little higher in fiber because we want them to actually maybe overeat so that we get all of them started in a very timely fashion, okay? With sheep and goats, they actually figure this out much quicker. Training curve, you might not even have to take the guard off to get them started. So with that said, this is where they're gonna be eating out of it. This is where our feed is. Uh, let's just fast forward a little bit and say that we're, we've kind of got them started, they're eating out of it. There's, there's two, two different terms that I want to use when I'm talking about how we use this feeder. One is limiting intake. In other words, we're actually going to control how much they eat per day. We, our target might be a half a percent of body weight per day. It might be one and a half percent of body weight per day. Okay. There's a difference, in my opinion, between limit feeding and control feeding. Control feeding, we might not necessarily be trying to limit intake. We may be wanting them to eat all they want to eat, but we still want to control how they eat out of it. We don't want them gorging themselves all at once. We still want to spread it throughout the day. So we can go either way with this feeder. We can either really set it down, make them really work, limit that intake, or we can open it up and make it a little more liberal but control that intake. Either way, we're spreading our consumption out over a period of time instead of all at once. So with that said, we've got a mix right here that's basically corn and a protein pellet. The corn is half whole and half cracked. Uh, with, with grains, what we found is whole grains work excellent in this feeder. Um, if you want to crack some of the grain, the starch will be more readily available. So starting young livestock, when the room is not developed, you may want to go with some of it partially crimped, some of it whole. Uh, as you get as you get on, as they get onto the feeder, it's probably okay to go with just the whole grain. Uh, there will be a little bit of difference between a feed like this versus an all pelleted feed. With, a, with, with, with this type of feed, we're gonna come in, we're gonna put our guard on. We're going to put it in what we call the lift down position, which is with this lift down. Okay. Now, to increase or decrease consumption at this point, we're, we can do it through two different adjustments. We can do it through our flow control, and we can do it with the bottom adjuster. If we were doing a feed, for example, let's just say straight whole corn, okay, we can actually turn this guard around. Like this. The gap in here is not so important. We can actually lower this flow control because they can get their tongue at this point right up to where the feed comes out. So we, we can set the flow control to where they actually have to work to get the feed out from underneath the flow gate. With any kind of mixed feed pellet, we're gonna recommend that you use the guard in the lift down position, which that's what this feed is. There again, we're gonna install the guard. <clears throat> we're gonna rely a little bit more on our bottom adjuster on this because we don't necessarily want the tongue to get up where that feed comes out because it's going to have more fines in it. If it's pellets, they're going to work those pellets a little harder. This allows us to have a little more drop zone for the feet so that the tongue can get in here and work. Now, when we look at this setting, uh, we'll talk cattle for right now. Believe it or not, this is a pretty liberal setting, okay? On, on this setting, you can see I'm on the number six position on the bottom adjuster. If you would, if you look out here at the side, I'm roughly on at about a three, which is about a flow of that much, okay? At this setting, once cattle get trained to it, we can expect them to eat probably easily 1%, maybe 2% of body weight per day. If we want to slow them down, we can drop the flow control a little, but just a little movement in this bottom adjuster really changes intake in a hurry. So say we wanted, we were getting say one and a half percent or more body weight per day consumption right now. 
on a five weight animal, 1% is five pounds. So one and a half percent is gonna be seven and a half pounds. If we wanted to slow that down, we had the flow adjuster down as much as we wanted it. What we would come in and do is start with very small movements. This is very easy to do. Loosen your set bolts. Okay. And then when you look at these adjusters, these cam adjusters, you can move them by simply putting your wrench on there and twisting them up. So I can take that from a six to a five. Just that much movement will make a tremendous difference in intake. So let's say maybe our intake is too much on six, not near enough on five. We don't have to be right on these numbers. We can actually come down and hit that part way. This is just a guide to set your adjuster. So you can see in this case, I'm gonna go about a five and a half. Okay, I'm pretty comfortable with that, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it. Reinstall the guard. Now we've shrunk this gap quite a bit. That little bit of movement can, can move feed consumption and probably is in the range of half a percent of body weight or more. There again, we can tighten this up just a little more and, and, and even slow that intake down quite a bit more. The guard is very critical. Even if you're not wanting to limit intake, we still recommend using the guard in most all cases uh, because if you don't, then the animal can come in and it can scrape feed out. One animal can hog a lot of the space. If you'll watch animal behavior once this guard goes in, animals come in, I'm gonna coin a phrase, their table manners become much better. They actually line up straight. You'll have more animals at a time eating out of the feeder. One animal's not hogging all the space. They're not raking a lot of feed into your trough. If you come out, when you're checking your feeder and you see that your feeder has a lot of feed in the trough, then, then you're probably got them too liberal. They're eating too much feed because that's the easy feed to eat what's here in the trough. What they drop here, they'll clean up quickly because it's easy. They have to work harder to get this. So, you know, it's kind of just a rule of thumb. If you're seeing quite a bit of feed in this trough, probably need to come in and change your adjustments and make it just a little harder for them. Uh, some of the results that we have found are pretty amazing. We found that we, we get our animals to target weights on around 20 to 25 percent less feed, sometimes in a shorter term also. And it's simply because we're keeping that pH level in the rumen at a more optimum range because as we're introducing feed or starch grains into that room and we're doing it a little at a time instead of a lot at a time. And, and, and that's pretty much where all of the increased feed conversion, you know, our, our results come from. It, it, it's pretty simple actually. So that's how the system works. Now with sheep and goats, the same setup, we're just probably going to even take these settings just a little bit smaller. So there's a little bit littler tongue, a little bit smaller animal. So there again, don't be afraid to take this even up further. You know, we may take this even up to a four and a half and make this gap quite a bit smaller, depending on what kind of feed, okay? If we're feeding an all pellet ration, because they're using their tongue and their saliva to work to get this out, we're going to have a little more buildup because of that saliva and that pellet. Depending on the physical properties of the pellet, we can get more buildup. Uh, so it's not uncommon 
when you check your feeder, it's not uncommon to come out here. It, it, if you see that there's no feed in here, then take your finger and, and just do this. If feed still doesn't fall down, then it's probably time to clean it. It's very easy to clean. Simply remove your guard. I'm gonna start this in. Okay. In the corner of your feeder is a cleaning tool. It has a couple ends, one to scrape to clean. Typically we'll use this in. We'll come in and we'll simply just clean out, drop it into the trough. You're not gonna waste the feed because the animal's still gonna eat. Okay. Uh, depending on the feed and, and, and the amount of animals you have on the feeder, you know, probably an extreme case would be once a day. Probably an average once you get your feeder set correctly is maybe two times a week, possibly one times a week that you have to do this. The feeder is also, part of knowing where you're at is measuring what you do. So we talk consumption, if you, you got to know what your animals weigh, uh, but you also got to know how much feed's going through this feeder. So on all of our feeders, when you look inside the feeder, we have a tape that has lines on it. Uh, what a lot of producers do is they'll put a known weight in their feeder to begin with, count how many lines that is. So maybe one line equals 300 pounds of feed. They got 40 animals on the feeder. You can do quick math. Hey, it took them, you know, two days to eat that. You know how much on an average each animal is eating per head per day. So that's kind of a quick way to, to kind of find out where you're at and, and, and what your animals are consuming. So that's a little bit, a brief introduction to how the feeder works. Uh, like I say, different feeds react differently. Different feeds can be challenging. Some are easy, some are harder. Uh, you know, it, we also have an 800 number and we have a staff that's available to answer questions. Uh, we're more than more than glad to talk to our customers once they purchase feeders because we want to see them get the best use they can out of them.